By the end of 2006, our world was full of two things. Curated keyboards, lots of them, and rumors of a phone made by Apple, lots of them. For many of you, this might not sound appealing, but for those of us that saw the birth of the iPod and then its evolution, we know how hot it was to see an iPhone, which we hope was better than the Moto Rocker disaster of two years earlier. That day came on January 9th, 2007, as Steve Jobs took the stage on his most iconic presentation ever to announce a phone that was also a widescreen iPod with touch controls and an internet communicator. If you were like me back then, using a Motorola Q or a Palm Tree or a Blackberry or even an HTC Titan II, there was no way you weren't going to be struck by the iPhone, and that's actually because this was the anti-smartphone, since it proved to be smarter than all of its competition, but it was also the first phone oriented to consumers for consuming content and not really a business tool like all the rest of the phones were. Surely what's left of our demo unit after Brandon Miniman's extensive view shows a lot of scars of wear and tear, and the fact that it still works like new almost a decade later is proof of its durability. This phone was the first in almost every single one of today's trends, like, for example, back then displays ranged from 2 inches to 2.5 inches, and this was the first big 3.5 inch capacitive glass display made by the same company that later dubbed it Gorilla Glass. It was the first aluminum and glass solution in a jungle made of plastic and was slimmer in its body than anything built at the time. The concept of a chrome ring around the front or a single home button may be common to you today, but back in 2007, this was a huge departure from what existed and a bold move nonetheless. Now when you look at the spec sheet, you saw a lot of good and buts. At times when phones barely ship with 1 gig of storage and when micro SD card barely got to 2 gigabytes, this phone ranged from 4 to 16 gigs of storage, which was great. It supported great Wi-Fi capabilities and fast connectivity, something which was odd and very slow at the time. And the same could be said about its Bluetooth capabilities as well. It also performed great, even with its small 412 megahertz ARM11 processor. Sadly, 3G was starting to become ubiquitous and this phone ran on edge speeds and its 1400 mAh battery was non-replaceable and its aluminum design made cellular reception challenging. All that being said, agree or disagree, this was the first modern smartphone design that we saw. And proof of it lies in how every single phone after it followed in its design and the reason why all these companies got sued for it. It polarized an entire industry, and true to Steve Jobs' claims on the event, it did reinvent the phone. Now, the true reinvention wasn't in the hardware, but really in the software. As opposed to, say, Windows Phone running on a Windows C kernel instead of a full Windows kernel, iPhone OS ran OS X's kernel. This allowed for the phone to do everything it did in a much better way than its competition. Stupid things like flick scrolling, which are common today, but back in 2007 were true shockers or one of the things this phone could do. Back when browsers required a mobile version of any site for it to load good, Apple's WebKit engine made the New York Times load in its entirety and allow you to smartly pinch to zoom, double tap on blocks of text, and again, it was a true shocker for everybody that saw this, up to the point where almost every competitor adopted WebKit eventually. Today, watching YouTube videos is common on your phone, but you had no idea what it was like to try to do that in 2007 until the iPhone figured it out. HTML email isn't a topic for today, but back in 2007, the iPhone was the only phone that could do this. Today, having Google Maps on your phone is a default feature, but back in 2007, you could only do this on the iPhone. Threaded messaging everyone? Well, back in 2007 again, the iPhone was the only device that could actually do this well. The list even goes as far as videos and movies where this phone beat the pants off any other phone that was more powerful than it because, again, it could do it in a smarter way. Using an iPhone back then was code for good and meh experiences. There wouldn't be an app store until a year later, but then again, nobody else actually had an app store, so you could really only do basic things on this device or use web apps. At times when competition did have applications and websites like Hand and Go, but these weren't as good or as cheap as they are today. You also didn't have a notification center, and notifications were extremely annoying. 
blocking you from doing anything else. There was also no control center, so instead you had to leave whatever it is you were doing and go into the settings application to do basic things like deal with screen brightness. Again though, to be fair, this is me comparing this phone by today's standards. Back then we didn't miss any of these things because we didn't really have these. Its 2 megapixel camera was dull for today's standards, but decent for anything you could buy back then. The same was said about its battery life since, even though it wasn't perfect, it allowed you to play music more than any other phone you could buy, and again, it could do every one of the tasks you can do back then with ease compared to, again, competing devices. The coolest part about owning an iPhone though was really the fact that it was a work in progress, and Apple made that very clear. This phone survived through three years of software updates up to iOS 3.1.3. It proved that Apple was committed to its customers by pushing this phone as far as it could, and hey, for $500 after a two-year contract, they better figure that one out, and they actually did. So, after seven years and eight different iPhone models, I guess you understand now why iPhones are so popular. If you think of it, this isn't just the first modern smartphone, but the origin of modern tablets as well. Steve Jobs was right. This phone was five years ahead of its time when compared to anything out there. I mean, it took Android so long to look good and Windows Phone too long to compete. It still is the best-selling smartphone in the industry, and even though Apple has been notorious for slowly stretching their seven-year-old design, we can't deny that even today, this old phone still looks gorgeous. That's it for our throwback of the first generation iPhone. Did you own this phone? Did you like it? Did you want it back in the day? Because in my particular case, I didn't have it and I did want it. So leave us a comment down below and tell us your experience and make sure you follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next throwback.